he was so controversial. He always pissed off the priests and the politicians. My life changed when I met him. It was just like a door opened and I went through a new door. He was the most powerful presence I'd ever been around. A uh, partner in a big law firm in L.A., fastest growing law firm in the United States while I was there. Um, in 81, I took a leave of absence. I was burned out, had a lot of power and success, and found that that wasn't it. Hmm. And, um, and I went, was basically, I, I went to, I want... I found out about Osho from a pal of mine and some friends. So I wanted to meet him. Okay. I went to India in 81. And uh, Osho, interestingly enough, Osho was in silence when I got there. Which at first I thought, isn't this, isn't this hilarious? You know, I'm a word guy, right? Trial lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Literature major, debater. So I, uh, at first, for a moment, I was disappointed, and then I just thought, oh, this is perfect. We will see. So I got to, I, I, I sat with him in silence. At that time, he was coming out every day, but he was in silence. And I immediately got the power of silence, the power of energy in silence, his energy in silence. Totally fell in love with him. A couple of days later, I was a disciple. When I had left my law practice, I swore I'd never go to another courtroom again. And six months later, I was back in court in a purple suit working for Rice and Dahl as a disciple, which was sort of hilarious. Kind of a bedazzled situation, if you know that movie. Anyway. Did you say uh, being sued for Rice and Non? Rice and Dahl. Oh, Rice and Dahl. Okay, yeah, the Indian dish, yeah. I thought we just, we, were, we had room and board in a place that we had a, 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 Vegetarian food and a place to sleep. None of that was really my thing. I had, a few months before, I'd been going to the very best restaurants in L.A. and uh, had a wine cellar at my house and wine <laughs> locker at my merchant and belonged to a private club and blah, 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 blah. But uh, my life changed when I met him. It was just like a door opened and I went through a new door. Fell in love with the guy. He was the most powerful presence I'd ever been around. And uh, in relatively short order, I became, he, ca he came to the United States. I didn't know he was coming to the United States. He came to the United States and I became his attorney after I was his disciple. Okay. Because um, he certainly needed American lawyers. Uh, they ca we came to the United States. They came to the United States. Well, it had nothing to do with me at the time. They came to the United States because he had health issues and also because he always wanted a place where he could do his teaching and he was so controversial. He, mm -hmm. he always pissed off the priests and the politicians. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. By calling him hypocrites, et cetera, et cetera liars, thieves, what they were, actually. But they yeah. didn't like that, somewhat understandingly. Yeah, people don't like to be called out on the truth. No. So when he was invited to come, uh, the people who wanted him to come, one of whom was an old pal of mine, um, he showed him a bunch of pictures of beautiful remote places in America that were available. And he showed him the Bill of Rights. Okay. To the Constitution. And he just loved that. He loved that freedom of speech, freedom of religion thing, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. So he said, okay, I'll come. It's not like he made decisions about stuff, but people would ask him for his blessing. Mm. And they also wanted to know if he'd come because that was the only way they were going to be able to raise the money for the thing to happen. You know? Yeah. So he came. And immediately the government was going after him, attacking him and the community. And I was his lawyer. It him pretty much from then on until he died. And I still do work for him, mostly intellectual property. He was real clear about keeping the purity of his message and his vision. Yeah. So I continue to work with intellectual property issues to make sure people aren't just saying what they want to say and calling it his work, you know? 
Yeah. So um, as soon as he got over here, there was already conflict. I thought that that came years after the community started. No, no. Within months of, within three months after he came to the ranch, there was an INS investigation that was started because the father of a disciple, a woman who was a disciple, wrote to, he was a big Republican giver. Mm-hmm. And he wrote to his pal, Ed Meese. You're probably too young to remember Ed Meese, but he was uh, he was Reagan's counselor and then attorney general. Oh, and wow. so and and so Meese turned around and ordered investigations to start. Within that same time frame, just a couple months, the uh, governor of Oregon said that if the neighbors didn't like us, we should go. The, the neighbors freaked out. They talked about constant fucking going on in the rooms because we had some people living in in the town of Antelope. Our ranch was 26 miles. It was 110,000 acres, 26 miles from the city of Antelope, which had 43 people in the last census, and it was officially a ghost town. So it goes um, down, and you were far away from the nearest person, it, yeah. anyways, with and that it, large of a ranch. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.